welcome back to the video. Guys, honestly, today's theory is a little questionable. I've done a lot of research to try put this together, and a lot of it's going to be like, well, you know, maybe. As most of you know, Yuki Tabara loves hints. He puts a hint somewhere in the story, and like 200 chapters later, it comes back, and it's just this massive thing that was like really obvious now that you look back at it, but before you knew about it, it didn't make sense. So I've really had to work a lot on this video for me to find the stuff I need to be able to convince you guys. Because at the end of the day, if I can't convince you, I'm a bad YouTuber, and you know... You shouldn't be watching this video, but to appreciate my efforts, please be sure to hit the like button. It really isn't hard. I don't know why it takes you guys so long. So guys, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe. Notifications on. There's a Jump Fest stream happening this Sunday, so that's going to be pretty big. So yeah, other than that, obviously this theory is about the fourth Zograda sibling. I'm not going to talk about who I think it is. Obviously, I think it's Julius, but that's just not the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation is Asta just defeated the giant Lucifer or devil. The Spade Kingdom arc is over, or is it? Where are we going from here? And I think I have the evidence. So let's just jump straight into this video. <laughs> Yo, jumping straight into it, there's honestly not much you need to know about this theory. The first thing you need to understand is that Yuki Tabara loves hints. Remember this hint where that guy was like, you know has wind magic? What? And every everybody now understands why that guy was so surprised. It's because you know he shouldn't have wind magic. You know doesn't have wind magic. You know's mom has star, and you know's dad has son. So why would their child have wind magic? Everybody in their own mother now understands why this guy was confused. But at the time, it was just a theory. Hmm. What if you know's real magic isn't wind? And of course, everybody who said that was laughed at. Until, wow, shockers, what a big reveal, you know his star magic. So, once again, you need to understand the way Yuki Tabara writes his manga, Black Clover. And also, you need to understand to hit the like button, so please be sure to hit the like button. Right, the next thing you need to understand is, for whatever reason, we now know there is a fourth Zogratis sibling. There is a fourth. Like, no matter how you plan it out, there's a fourth. The Dark Triad is actually a team of four, though the, it's currently ran by Dante, Vanaka, and Xenon in the Spade Kingdom, representing the Dark Triad. Now, what's interesting about this is only in the Spade Kingdom are they actually running it. But behind the scenes, clearly running the shots is a fourth sibling who isn't exactly with them at the current moment. So the real question is, where is that sibling? And with Lucifer's defeat this chapter, I think that is what is going to happen. So let's jump into the third thing. We know that this, this, the fourth sibling has the strongest affinity with devil magic. In this panel, he says, don't worry, Xenon, you're the one who's most like me. You have a greater aptitude for being a devil host than either Dante or Vonica. So in basic reality, Dante and Vonica are absolute father. Xenon and obviously the big brother actually have way better affinity with devil magic and they just can learn to understand it better we've seen people like this before for example knocked faust who at the age of 18 managed to contract four devils which led him to be cocky enough to go and try contract with um obviously the giant devil lucifugis and it all ending very very badly leading up to morgan's death so the big brother has a plan and obviously i don't think what's happening in this arc is his plan but rather his backup plan now remember i told you yuki tabara likes hints we go to this one 
in the Clover Kingdom, far, far away from the action, Julius says something isn't right. It feels as if something enormous is about to emerge. Now, 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 obviously you would assume, yo, it's that giant Luciferor devil. Yeah, oh my god, Julius called it. And yeah, obviously Julius is time magic, so maybe that's why he's sensing something's about to emerge. But, but what's interesting here is Luc Julius doesn't say where. Julius just says something enormous is about to emerge. Once again, something written along the lines and the next chapter. Oh, yeah, guys, obviously Julius was talking about the giant Luciferor devil. <laughs> or was he? Now, at this point, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. We now go to this panel as well. As I said, you will be the ones to die. Don't worry, though. You have nowhere to return to in any case. Now, after he said this, the same chapter, a giant demon just randomly drops into the Clover Kingdom. And everyone assumes Xenon was talking about that. Now, I have problems with this. They had no idea... The D, that the Clover Kingdom was going to attack this Spade Kingdom. An entire attack happened basically over the night, over the course of two days. Knocked, teleport them straight into the castle. They had absolutely no idea the Clover Kingdom was going to attack. So, they sent a single demon to fight the whole of the Clover Kingdom. 400 years ago, the Wizard King... J Fuck, what was his name? Lumiere Silver Million Clover soloed that ancient demon, which was arguably probably way stronger than this demon. So Xenon's entire plan was to destroy the whole of the Clover Kingdom, even though his brother was just defeated by a guy with anti-magic with just one demon. That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense... It doesn't add up, and there's a reason why I was so suspicious of this when it first happened over 40 chapters, 30 chapters ago, I guess by now, or oh, oh, close to 40 chapters ago. It's because it just happens out of nowhere. Now, obviously, people assume Tabata did this because it's Asta, Devil Union, slash, 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 and Asta solos the demon. It's a cool way of showing Asta's plan. But what if... It was a distraction. Why? 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 Why would anyone... Why would they send a demon as a distraction to the Clover Kingdom? I started to question this myself. Until I found... some After rereading the Elf Ark, something in the Elf Ark. So let's start here. During the Elf Ark, the elves face traveled to the Clover Kingdom. This was because the castle was badly gouged. Latry must have gone on an incredible rampage. I doubt that shabby looking king is alive there. And now, all that's left is to fit the final magic stone into the pedestal in the castle and activate a spell that uses the entire kingdom. The final stone is already in the hands of the elves. We'll wash away the malice we've been affected with as a side of effect of the forbidden magic and complete our reincarnation. We'll wipe out the humans, regaining a world that's only populated by peaceful elves. That was the plan. By using the Gravido stone with magic, we will open that which was sealed inside the Clover Kingdom. Obviously... This was a massive trap. Zagred used the Shadow Place, a place that links the underworld to the real world, and used this magic to summon himself. But there was a problem. Even Zagred says, while imperfect, the spell Zagred used with the elves as its base, with the Shadow Palace that is a connection to the Clover Kingdom because of the massive thing that's seemingly just sealed in the Clover Kingdom for a reason. And he summoned himself. But the real problem here is that the spell was imperfect. 
that so that it wasn't complete. Now, obviously, from other teachings, we know that the Shadow Palace is the door to the underworld. And I want to reiterate that again. The door to the underworld. <laughs> it's the Shadow Palace. A magic space that acts as the border between this world and the next. And I want to point out, this guy is actually Zagred. Yuki Tabata reminded us that this guy is actually Zagred right now. And the next. The Elves of Antiquity trusted it to the humans as the result of an ancient pact. Only the Apostles of Sephira, ten Elves who are able to receive divine revelations, can open it. When we put the final magic stones in the petal stones inside the palace, the elves' reincarnation will be finalized. In exchange, the souls of the humans who own these bodies will be sent to the underworld. Now, obviously, this is Zagrid telling this, and he's currently taking over this guy's body. But the Shadow Palace, a secret given to, entrusted to the humans by the ancient elves, an ancient pact was the door, as it says here, the door to the underworld. And in the underworld are the devils. So we go back to the theory. What am I trying to say? I believe the fourth Zogratis sibling is not in the Spade Kingdom. He's not dead. Obviously, that'd just be weird. I'd be a little weird if he's dead, but fuck it, whatever. I believe the fourth Zograde sibling is in the Clover Kingdom. He summoned the ancient demon as a distraction. And he is going to use the ancient pact entrusted to the humans and unleash... What was it again? What was it? Where is 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 it? The door to the underworld. And the last time it was imperfect. The fourth Zagratis sibling, as you know, has a greater aptitude of devil magic. And the devils could have easily told them about the door to the underworld just sealed away in the Clover Kingdom. He's going to do something unbelievable in the next few chapters of the Black Clover manga. At the end of the day, I don't know where we're going with this, but I believe if this is what Tabata is doing, and this is why Julius is saying something enormous is about to emerge, I believe this is the path Black Clover is on. See you in the next video. My name is Jimmy as always. Peace.